How far away are we from something like chat GPT being impossible to detect? I think we're not that far away. In this video, we will hear Lex Friedman explain what ChatGPT is, how it works, and the potential dangers of it if it continues to expand. Hey, uh, what have your people done? Your, your AI people with this <laughs> chat GPT. <laughs> this your, scares your the <laughs> out of me. What it's your mean? people. What do you mean? Your, your AI people. people. <laughs> your your uh, wacky coders. What have you done? Yeah, it's super interesting. Fascinating. It, it, language models, I don't know if you know what those are, but that's the general uh, systems that... Uh, underlie ChatGPT and GPT. They've been progressing over the past maybe four years aggressively. There's been a lot of development. GPT-1, GPT-2, GPT-3, uh, GPT-3.5. In ChatGPT, there's a lot of interesting technical stuff that maybe we don't want to get into. Sure, that, let's get into it. Well, that was, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. So ChatGPT is based on fundamentally on a 175 billion uh, parameter neural network that is GPT-3. And the rest is what data is it trained on and how is it trained. So you already have like a brain, mm -hmm. a giant neural network, and it's just trained in different ways. So Chad, uh, GPT-3 came out about two years ago and it was like impressive but dumb in a lot of ways. It was like you would expect as a human being for it to generate certain kinds of text and it was like saying kind of dumb things that were off. And you're like, all right, this is really impressive but it's not quite there you can tell it's not intelligent and what they did with uh, GPT 3.5 is they started adding more and different kinds of data sets there one of them probably the smartest neural network currently is codex which is fine-tuned for programming like it was it was uh, trained on code on programming code and when you train on programming code which chat, chat GPT is also you're teaching it something like reasoning because it's no longer uh, information and knowledge from the internet. It's also reasoning. You can like logic. Even though you're looking at code, programming code is you're looking at me like, oh, what geez. the f is he talking about? No, no, but, no, no. That's not no. what I'm looking at. So, I'm looking at you like, oh my God. But, but reasoning is a, in order to be able to stitch together sentences that make sense, you not only need to know the facts that underlie those sentences, you also have to be able to reason. Yeah. And, and we think of it, we take it for granted as human beings that we can do some common sense reasoning. Like, like this war started at this date and ended at this date. Therefore, it means that uh, like the start and the end has a meaning. There's a temporal consistency. There's a cause and effect. All of those things are inside programming code. By the way, a lot of stuff I'm saying we still don't understand. We're like intuiting why this works so well really but th these are the intuitions yeah there's a lot of stuff that are not clear so Ch chat th so gpt 3.5 which chat gpt is likely based on there's no paper yet so we don't know exactly the the details but it was just trained on on code and more data that's able to give it some reasoning then this is really important it was fine-tuned in a supervised way by human labeling small data set by human labeling of here's what we would like this network to generate here's the stuff that makes sense here's the kind of dialogue that makes sense here's the kind of answers to questions that make sense it's basically pointing this giant titanic of a neural network into the right direction that aligns with the way human beings think and talk so it's not just using the giant wisdom of uh, Wikipedia and just, I can talk about what data sets is trained on, but just basically the internet, it was pointed in the wrong direction. So this uh, supervised labeling allows it to point in the right direction to when it's set, you're like, holy shit, that's pretty smart. So that that's the alignment. And then they did uh, something really interesting is using reinforcement learning uh, based on labeling data from humans. This, that's quite a large data set the task is the following you have this smart dpt 3.5 thing generate a bunch of text and humans label which one seems the best so ranking like uh, you ask it a question uh for example you do uh generate a joke in the style of joe rogan right and you have a label they have five options and you have a label there's a mention <laughs> no, I, don't, I, don't know which, I don't know how exactly but uh, it, uh, so you, you get it to rank the the human labelers just over just sitting there there's a very large number of them they're working full time they're labeling the ranking of the outputs of this model and that kind of ranking 
used together with a technique called reinforcement learning is able to get this thing to generate very impressive to humans output so it's not actually there's not a significant breakthrough in how much knowledge was learned that was already in, in gpt3 and there was much more impressive models already trained so it's on the way not just open ai but this kind of fine fine tuning it's called by human labelers plus reinforcement learning you start to get like like where uh students don't have to write essays anymore in high school yeah where you can uh style transfer like i said uh do a uh louis ck joke in the style of joe rogan or joe, joe joe rogan joke in the style of louis ck and it does an incredible job uh, at, at those kinds of style transfers you can uh more accurately query things about the different historical events all that kind of stuff holy shit, man the the idea that you don't exactly know why it works the way it works that that's too close to human that's cl too close to human thinking like you know what this eerily is is eerily similar to the plot of ex machina that scene where um she f gets him to fall in love with her it's just, it's so creepy when she comes back with clothes on and she's got a wig and you're like, oh my God, like it's so subtle, like it's so well done. The scene is so well done, yeah. but that's what Chad GPD is doing. Yeah. They're, they're, they're real, it's real close. How far away are we from something like Chat GPT being impossible to detect? Whether or not it's a person or whether it's Chat GPT. Well, it depends who is playing with it. I think we're not that far away in terms of capability, but in order to use these systems and rather in order to train these systems, you have to be a large company. And large companies tend to get scared when it's doing interesting stuff. Really? Well, they tend to want to, even currently with ChatGPT, it's become a lot less interesting. Interesting spoken in a Bukowski, Hunter S. Thompson kind of interesting because the companies are kind of censoring it. You don't want it to have any kind of controversial opinions. You don't want it to be too edgy. You don't want oh, it to be really? uh, too, like uh, if I ask it, how do I build the because I want to destroy the world. You want it to prevent that. How about, how do I, uh, 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 I don't know, convince, I, I don't know anything about this, but how do I convince uh, a dude or a girl to sleep with me and go, like anything, I'm just off the top of my head. Anything, you start to get nervous. Imagine if you're a company, how do I want people to use this kind of system? Right. Especially because it's basically an assistant that gives you wisdom about the world, gives you knowledge about the world. You can I mean, ask it could be like, questions. how do I replace a carburetor? Yeah, that's great. And it'll just answer you like a person. If we make the model bigger, 175 billion parameters currently, if you get it to 500, you get it to uh, a trillion parameters, so size of the network grows, size of the data set grows, is there, is there going to be a point where you're like, holy <laughs> it will... Uh, what if it starts manipulating you with the, with the answers? It's going to. It's going to manipulate world governments. And what it's do gonna, you do with that? What can you do with it? So once it's once it's been implemented, once it's out there, once it's copied, and it's going to be copied. And and that's the cool thing about this. So I, I should say that everyone kind of knows how to do this. It's, it's computationally difficult, but it's getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So it's not just going to be OpenAI with Microsoft or Google that's doing this. It's basically anybody can do this. And so that, the distributed nature of our exploration of uh, artificial intelligence, I think if you believe that most people are good, that we will, uh, we will not allow sort of a centralization of power, which is the big concern here. Whether that centralization of power leads to censorship or abuse uh, of different kinds. Centralization of power of AI, is yeah. that what you're saying? Well, over an AI. So say you have a super intelligent system, somebody, is the first person that built it yeah. imagine you're sitting there in a boardroom you have this thing you haven't released yet that it's able to uh b basically is, is a super intelligence able to answer any question able to give you a plan on how to make a lot of money able to give you a plan on how to manipulate other governments into uh, uh into any a, a, any kind of geopolitical resolution that benefits you all of that it's able to give you all of that and you can deploy it and you can deploy it in a shady way where it sneaks into like TikTok or something like that. It, you, it sneaks into everybody's smartphone uh, pretending to be doing good, but it's actually whether deliberately or not is controlling the population. So that that's a really the that capability is there. The cool, the great thing is 
the people at the head of OpenAI currently, uh, Sam Altman, and others really care about this problem. They, they were there in the beginning. They were the ones like Elon screaming about AI ethics, AI alignment. They're really concerned about super intelligent AI taking over.